We're here to look at plays, get better as basketball officials. Let's look at five plays. Stick around. Greetings and welcome back to another episode of Five Play Friday, the show where we take a look at game video, analyze all the things so that we can get better as basketball officials. Greetings again, everybody. My name is Greg Austin with a betterofficial.com. We craft video to help basketball officials get better and take control of their officiating career. If this is the video content that you find valuable as a basketball official, be a great time to do all the things. Make sure you are hit like, hit subscribe, and the notify bell so you don't miss out on any of our new content. We live stream two times a week. Join us for the live stream so we can all get better together. Fantastic. Allow us a moment to thank our tremendous show supporters. I can't do that. Okay. Thomas Burnside, Jay Brown, Mark Harvey, Darwin Sonata, and Roger Mully. Much appreciated and much love. You want to support the show, you know there's going to be a link down in the show notes below. All right, today we are looking at plays. Stick around for a bonus play. It's that wild and crazy last second possible travel uh, from down in Florida. So we're going to look at that play on the bonus. Let's take a look at play number one. here. Huh. Okay. So we have a pull down play, two person mechanics here in California. This is down in the LA area. And let's note, this is from Desert Valley Officials Association. Got to give them a shout out. Like when, uh, maybe 10 years ago, they were the absolute number one source of video for high school basketball officials on YouTube, right? Went for a few years and then stopped. Um, they could still find the channel, but uh, so I could not tell you how excited I was to, to when is something new coming out on DVBOA. So shout out to them for that. Um, but we have a pull down play here and um, a possible upgrade non-calling official goes to the calling official they have a conversation and then we come up with an upgrade uh, uh intentional foul on the play and so it's a great example of two-person mechanics and executing providing information right you may have a different view on this play we see the obviously the offensive player goes you know takes the legs out from the defender on this play but the defender uh you know grabs their shoulder and rotates them it wasn't just a like prevent themselves from falling kind of thing. Um, they rotate them on the play. Our crew gets together. Let's look at the body position of the crew, right? One official open to the player. Second official is like really focusing on his partner. When we have players on the court, let's try to maintain an, a, body, a body position that's open. We can have a conversation where we're talking to each other this way as opposed to this way, right? So these are the habits we want to look at, habits and fundamentals when we have a situation like this. We don't know the temperature of the game. Non-calling official comes in quickly, right? We want to make sure that our, you know, we see a teammate of white is helping a teammate, their teammate on the play, et cetera. That's the behavior we want. We don't want any uh, white coming in and uh, inter inter engaging with black on this play or black on white, et cetera.
right? So pull down play, really kind of straightforward. The keys here are how we're going to manage things as a crew. First of all, if we, you know, if you are the non-calling official and you see something on the play that you feel needs to to up, be an upgrade on the play, remember calling officials. Uh, you know, are not always, they don't always have all of the information, right? So on the backside, we have the, the defender grabbing a shoulder and pulling down, right? And the, 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 the lead may not see that, that uh, situation. Sometimes we come in with a perspective of, hey, given everything we know about this game and how it's been going and et, et cetera, right? Here's what I have on that play, right? And that's how we want to approach it as well. We come to our partner and say, I have I have an intentional foul for excessive contact on this play, right? Not like we may come in and say, hey, do we need to think about upgrading that play? But if we you know, feel that an upgrade is necessary, come in with what you have, right? This is what I have. And the calling official may say, uh, you know, may take that information, may not take that information, right? Les says he'd send him to the bench, right? So that's a decision we have to make in a two-person scenario. Is this going to be a quick conversation? Is this something that we need to discuss? We had this occur, then this occur, then this occur. It's a layered play. We may need to work out a lot of things. This is really kind of more simple, and we may be able to you know, have that conversation really quickly. Would have liked to see the calling official, though, not turn and focus on the partner as much as open up to the court and have that conversation. And if your partner's coming to you in this situation, right? So you're the calling official, you're the lead, your partner is coming to you, what's your first thought, right? They are coming with information about this play and we need to be receptive to that information and not defensive. Like, no, I didn't have that. No, I don't want that. You know, I, I, you know, let's just do this, right? So, if, if our, you know, our number one reaction as the calling official here when our partner comes to us is, hey, I'm ready to, ex- I'm ready to receive that information from my partner, right? They have the information. Let's go with this. Now let's look at the calling official. <laughs> let's look at the calling official after he gets the information and we're going to upgrade Right, we want that. boom. It's we want a little more strength when we're reporting. Right, the game again wants officials to be strong. It's just like you know, get it, receiving information from a partner is uh, is a success. It's not a fail. I'm, I'm the lead, and I didn't have intentional. My partner came in and said we need to upgrade. Oh boy, I, I guess I screwed that up. No, no, we're working together as a crew right? Our crew has been successful here in providing information. We're feeling great about this situation. Boom, that's intentional. We go to the table, we report, we're strong, etc. But what we end up with here as well is, let's see if I go... What we end up with here as well is, I'm going to make a trek over to explain the call to the offended coach. And that's not a good look. Um, right? The coach wants an explanation. I mean, just so we report, we turn, we know how we're going to administer this play, we're going to clear the lane, etc. We're going to shoot two free throws. We're going to award the team the ball at the end line. Uh, you know, so we turn. We're ready to administer the game. The coach wants an explanation. Yeah, I'll go give him an explanation. But it's not necessarily, a, okay, we called an intentional foul, so now we have to go explain it to the coach, right? More strength there is, uh, is what I'd say on this play. All right, let's move on now to play number two.
All right. Great play. I love it. So we have a five-point game, third period, late third period. This is a playoff game, two high-level teams, um, and we have this off-ball action, right? What's really interesting about this is where on the court it occurs. Who else can officiate this play but the trail, right? Lead is a long way from that action. Center is a long way from that action, right? So let's look at the uh, positioning of the trail, first of all, on the play. How would we describe our competitive matchup on the ball, right? There is zero energy on this ball. As the trail, this allows us, right, to take in much more information. We can look off ball. There's nothing about the matchup that needs our attention, right? Um, Eric Lewis says 70-30, you know, 70 on the defender, 30 on the ball handler. In this case, I'd say 70-30, 70 off ball, 30 on ball, since there's no matchup here of note, right? But let's take a look at the play itself. Two players are engaged. Right, So what we have is a situation where our defender reaches out, our defender reaches out and puts an arm around, and then our offensive player clamps down on that arm, right? Super subtle action. Go there. Right, great demeanor by the calling official. She's got a double foul. We're going to resume at where we're going to resume on a double foul at the point of interruption. In this case, that would be where the ball is. Just to clarify that, um, not where the foul occurred. Our center official seems to be coming in and uh, potentially indicating that where our throw-in spot's going to be. Just a reminder. Yeah. So a good example of a trail not telescoping on a non-competitive matchup, right? That's takeaway number one. In this instance, when there's a non-competitive matchup, what's going to happen next? Where's the screener coming from? What's going on off ball, etc.? And this is a little corner of the court here where we really can't get, I mean, somebody can, the center could come across the court and get a foul in this situation. The lead could come but they are so far away, it would be a real challenge. And they'd be maybe potentially reluctant to do so as a result. All right, let's take a look. Let's take a look now at play number three. Right. So this is a previous play. This is two minutes to go in the first half. 15-point lead. Game got much closer after this. Right. So let's take a look at uh, what goes on on this play, which is ends up being unofficiated. And that's one of the huge factors on this play. When we have a player go to the, fo the floor violently in this situation, and it's unofficiated, 
then that's a problem. So we have, then we have to say, okay, how did we how did we get to a play that's unofficiated? And this is a great example of how we would analyze our game video, right? We see we it's always going to revolve around the positioning of the crew. Why were we uh, you know, not observing what we should be observing on this play, right? So let's take a look. So, right, so we have a held ball situation on the floor. How many players are on this side of the floor, right? We have a held ball situation, right? Lead needs to rotate. Lead needs to rotate here, right? There's just no reason not to. Even if if play resolves, okay, then, then we're in great position as a crew. If there's some issues related, if we get a held ball situation here, we can close down, be observant, etc. When we have a player in distress on the floor here as well, right? What do our antennas go up as officials? What do we expect from the player who's in distress, coach? Right? We anticipate the timeout. We may, we may want to position ourselves as lead here to get a better look at that. Right, but obviously our uh, our trail here would need to be sensitive to that as well. But we end up being out of position at this point, and then the ball court, and then there's a hurried rotation by the lead. Right, the hurried rotation here, you know, can't make up for the fact that we're out of position. Our new trail has a closed look on the play, you know, makes it takes a step, but really can't get a look at the shot here. And our new center, I think we see head up looking at the basketball, right? And that's if we have cables up top and shot clocks like we do in California and things that 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 there may be an out of bounds call on a play, sometimes we're inclined to do that. But you know, in rebounding situations, we want to be ball aware here. Ball aware. Try is going up. What do we expect? Players are engaged for rebounding. Players may come in from the outside, etc. I'm on the weak side. I need to be really aware of this and really effective. And we just you know. If we're looking at players' numbers, we're in great shape. If we are disconnected from the players themselves and are looking up, especially in a girls' game, we're not going to have a lot of uh, play at the basket, right? That can give us license sometimes to say, "I, I, I need, I can, I can focus my attention lower on the house." In the. Oh. But in the end, we have a pull down on the play. Let me go back. I'm at 4.2. I want to be at 4.3. Yeah. Oh, okay. So lead should be over there now. Those two are going at it. Let's take a look at the actions by White. Right, this is all legal activity. Right, when the, when the defender or when the player in black um, tries to uh, move the player in white, the player in white grabs the arm but the player in black is uh, pretty strong. <laughs> and that player, player in white ends up going down hard. This would be a uh, hitting the head, possible hitting the head situation as well that we need to be aware of. But in the end, the, the, the action that led to the player going down is unobserved by the crew, right? Our center official is observing... Um, the, the the defender on the try has our lead transitioned her eyes effectively here hmm. maybe it was just a no call Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. She threw her down. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look now at play number four. Right. A little simpler play scenario here. Not as much debate and certainly not unobserved. I go there. Yes. Okay. See, I want to be able to do that from the keyboard. <laughs> right. So we have a rotation on the play. Uh, center's moving into position. We have rebounding action engaged. Our, def our inside player has her arms straight up. Even though that that uh, involves uh, the player in white, her arm ends up over an arm. So we want to see how they got to that position. But in the end, the obvious action here is by white saying, you know, uh, both a twist and a push to throw her to the floor. Right. Obvious foul on the play. Our crew takes advantage of the opportunity, even though this is going to be excessive contact. Let's see. What's our status of the ball on this play? So we have a try for goal. Ball does not go in, right? So our, our, uh, we, don't, we have less complicated scenario in this scenario, but what our crew does is say, okay, let's, let's send everybody to the benches. Let's get through, let's get a repetition at doing what we do. Let's evaluate the play. We are going, are we going to go, I have intentional foul. Maybe my partner says I have flagrant foul, right? That's the discussion we need to have. Or if the other partner says, no, I have common foul. <laughs> and we need to, to work that as a crew, right? And say, what is going to be our ruling on this play? There's no preliminary signal by the calling official or by the lead who we would say, this is her primary coverage area. Um, and we're going to sort all that out. And then if we need to, we know exactly what we're going to do. Okay. The, uh, it, it, if we were using high school rules here, the offended player is going to shoot two. They're going to get the ball at this spot. If we need to, if it's complicated play, layered, and they need some explanation, we'd go to the coaches potentially and bring them together. But this is just an opportunity for the crew to send everybody to the benches, communicate effectively as a crew, come up with our ruling. If necessary, explain our ruling. If not, administer the game and move forward. Aaron, let's look at now at play number five. All right, so another throwdown. We are throwing down here today at Five Play Friday. Let's take a look at this play. So we got a player crashing in. Little engagement. And then a pretty severe 
pull down, right? So the player coming in creates some contact and then the player who they came in upon reacts by throwing them down. Our official comes up with a double foul in this situation. And our calling official, if we look, not showing a lot of strength and certainty in this situation, right? And operating on an island. But, make, you know, it's just like, well, you know, <laughs> went through all the possibility. Let's go double, right? And that's not an uncommon situation here where an official will make that judgment. Let me go back here. But if we look at our play, right, player comes in from the outside, bumps, engage, player doesn't like. Let me see here. Yeah, that's quite a judo move, that takedown. So, if we came together as a crew on this play, right? Let's say uh, the ruling is is a double foul, and the double foul occurs at what is the status of the ball on this play, right? That's what we need to know to properly adjudicate the play. As Jason Hayes points out, Let's go back here. The ball has passed through the basket. The ball is dead. Then we have this activity, right? So are we talking about live ball contact, dead ball contact? This ball is dead. These are technical fouls by rule and should probably be properly adjudicated that way. At the high school level, Right, that uh, this this scenario has actually been changed in NCAA women's women's rules. Consider even though is this is a dead ball foul, <clears throat> saying we're going to treat it as a live ball. But that's something that we could right. So when we operate on an island here, and we don't engage our crew about an atypical play, then we are at risk of potentially going down the wrong path. Right. So as if we were if we were on the crew and not this uh, new trail or new uh, new lead who's basically running away from the game. If we you know, let's say we're the center official here and we may come in and say, hold on, partner, hold on. We've got dead ball. These are dead ball fouls. Right. So that's something we need to be aware of. The status of the ball at all times. <clears throat> Right. All right. Let's go there. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look now at a bonus play. It's a wild one. Let's go. absolutely wild sequence in an end of game scenario right obviously just a couple of seconds i can't read the clock but just a couple of seconds remaining on the inbound play the player slips did they travel that's the question on the play did they step out of bounds becomes a secondary question on the play when we view this video um popular video making the rounds etc but just a crazy scenario the last thing you expect uh, in this instance, does this player travel?
travel is the key question. We see our defender here doing the obvious reaction. Our defender, you know, goes into a travel signal, hey, ref, and then says, oh, I better play defense because there's no call. We have a last second shot. Do we have an open look on the play? Becomes a question we'd want to look at. And we're scoring that goal. Crazy town. Crazy town. Yeah, so as Jason says, uh, so let's just quickly address the is that out of bounds, right? This blue area that we see is not the sideline. It's the edge of the court, so that's not a factor. Does our player travel on this play? It is illegal for a player holding the ball to touch a part of their body other than their hands or their feet to the floor. A player standing up cannot touch a knee, holding the ball cannot touch a knee, right? A player who falls on their backside holding the ball has traveled. A player who gets off balance and puts an arm down, an elbow, has traveled by rule. So does this player, when they catch the ball, right? We need to make a judgment about whether they even ever caught the ball before they started their dribble. Um, you know, I do not see a catch of the ball and then contact on the floor. I, I don't know that I see a catch of the ball on this play, but the player who's then on the floor is not allowed to stand up, right? That's obvious. We know that. But wait a minute. They are allowed to dribble and stand up. And that's what this player does, right? Ball's loose, bounce, dribble, stand up, go crazy town with the clock running down, has the wherewithal to pull up, money, last second shot wins the game, but excitement reigns. We love it when a game ends this in this fashion. So this is a legal play by rule. They do not catch the ball and go to the floor. And then once they are on the floor, they can begin a dribble by rule and stand up, which this player does. Legal play, exciting play, game winner. Center comes in and scores it. And we are out of here. Hey, thanks for joining us today on Five Play Friday. If you find this to be the content that you appreciate, great time to do all the things, the like and the subscribe and the notify. Allow us a moment to thank our tremendous show supporters. Thomas Burnside, Jay Brown, Mark Harvey, Darwin Sonata, and Roger Mully. Much appreciated and much love. You want to buy us a coffee, you can always head to a betterofficial.com slash coffee. Included above, you'll find a link and in the show notes below. Tremendous additional video content available here. I've made this choice. YouTube says this is the one to watch. You make your choice and we'll see you in the very next video. Take care.